of you. Okay. Good morning, everybody. We're going to give a couple minutes for uh, folks to join us and make sure everybody's here, and then we'll start. If you are joining us on our um, public page, uh, we're glad you're with us. Uh, some of you are from sister congregations and we're glad to be able to worship with you. Uh, some are from our community and if you're joining us uh, in that way, we certainly are glad you're with us and um, hope that once we're able to worship together, uh, that you're able to join us for those worships as well but we're glad you're with us this morning. And we will be in John chapters uh, 16 and 17 this morning. Uh, so uh, if you want to get your Bibles out and have it open to that, we'll, we'll get to those things in just a few minutes. It is always so awkward for me, uh, sitting here waiting for people and uh, talking to the backs of phones while my daughters uh, man the cameras, but uh, could be worse, so glad we have the technology to do what we're doing. <clears throat> uh, we'll go ahead and, and uh, get started, uh, and then others who are joining can jump in or just start from the beginning. Um, it is a great day to be together to worship our God and encourage each other. Uh, and I wanted to start this morning with uh, some questions that you may be asking yourselves. Uh, have any of you thought or, or asked yourselves the question, when will I see people again? When, when will we be able to meet together as a church? Um, when will I be able to do uh, the things I normally do? Uh, when will I be able to send my kids back to school? Some of you may be asking. Um, and I think the biggest problem for us uh, through all of this is it's a word that I keep coming back to, and that's uncertainty. You know, if we, if we knew for certain that on this date, everything uh, would kind of go back to normal, everything would... Uh, uh, the restrictions would be dropped and we'd be able to worship together again and uh, school will start again and, and all of those things. If we knew those things, I think it'd be easier for us to go through this time, um, the, the time that we're in. But not knowing those things and every few weeks having another announcement that things have been pushed back further or there's, there's tighter restrictions on where I can go. Uh, I think those are the difficult things that we, we just never know where the next step's going to be and, and uh, how things are going to be in a week or two weeks. Uh, and as I've been thinking about that and thinking about this time of year is uh, next Sunday will, will be Easter Sunday. Um, I, I think back to almost 2,000 years ago, and there were people that were in a similar situation, uh, that is a situation of an uncertainty. Um, and I want us to begin our time in John chapter 16, uh, verse 16, and, and this is part of a passage where Jesus is um, speaking to his disciples. Uh, he's in the final week of his life. Uh, and he's trying to prepare them for what is to come. And they're uncertain about things. They're, um, they have a lot of questions. Uh, there are a lot of things that uh, they're not even aware of or 
They don't even know they should be asking certain questions. But Jesus is taking this time uh, as a part of his final uh, meal with them and as they're heading to the garden uh, to share these things with them. And, and in John chapter 16, verse 16, Jesus says, A little while and you will no longer see me. A little while and you will see me. Therefore, some of his disciples said to one another, what is this? He tells us a little while and you will not see me again, a little while and you will see me. And because I am going to the father, they said, what is this? He is saying a little while. We don't know what he's talking about. They were confused. They were uncertain. They were fearful. Uh, they were unaware. Uh, and so um, this is all part of a context where Jesus has already washed their feet and they didn't uh, really understand why their master was washing their feet and he had to explain that to them. He told them about the upcoming betrayal of Judas and uh, the denials that they all would make. Um, and they uh, were confused about, about those things. Uh, he informed them of his departure, of his death. Uh, he instructed them to remain in him and to, uh, to love each other. Uh, he warned them of persecution. All that's found in the uh, previous couple of chapters. And then he says these things. And they say, what is this that he's talking about? What does he mean when he says he's going to go away uh, and we won't see him anymore, but then there'll be a little while and, and we will see him? What does all that mean? And so we continue on in, uh, in that passage in verse 19. It says, Jesus knew they wanted to question him. So he said to them, are you asking one another about what I said? A little while and you will not see me again, a little while and you will see me. I assure you, you will weep and wail, but the world will rejoice. You will become sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn to joy. When a woman is in labor, she has pain because her time has come. But when she has given birth to a child, she no longer remembers the suffering because of the joy that a person has been born into the world. So you also have sorrow now, but I will see you again. Your hearts will rejoice and no one will rob you of your joy. In these verses, Jesus tells them sorrow will turn to joy. He says you will have sorrow. That's a fact but it will turn to joy. I will see you again. Your hearts will rejoice and no one will be able to rob you of the joy that's going to be provided in that. We have difficulties now and, and I'm certainly not comparing uh, this current crisis that we're in to uh, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But I think some of the emotions and some of the um, uh, mental aspects of it are, are similar to what they were going through. The uncertainty that we face is the uncertainty that uh, the apostles faced. And as they faced it, and, and Jesus comforts them by saying, you're going to be, you're going to have sorrow now. You're going to have difficulty now. But that will turn to joy. That will, that will turn to, uh, uh, a time that no one can rob you of. No, no circumstance can rob you of. And I think that applies to us even 2,000 years later, that even in the uncertain times of today, we have a joy that no one can rob us of and no virus can rob us of. And that joy is found in Jesus Christ. I want us to go ahead and continue reading in John chapter 16, verse 33. Jesus tells them, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. You will have suffering in this world. Be courageous. I have conquered the world. Again, we can have peace even in the middle of suffering. We can have courage because we know that Jesus has conquered the world. He goes on 
to say a prayer in John chapter 17. And in that prayer, he prays to the Father. Uh, he prays that the Father would be glorified through, uh, through what Jesus is doing, uh, through his going to the cross. And he prays uh, for, for the Father to be glorified in that. He prays for his disciples uh, and uh, what they will face and the work that they need to do. But then in verse 20, he shifts his prayer to a prayer for us. In uh, John chapter 17, verses 20 and 21, he says, I pray not only for these, the disciples, the, 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 those that were with him, I pray not only for these, but also for those who believe in me through their message. That's us. We believe in Christ because of the message uh, of those apostles. And his prayer is this, verse 21, May they all be one as you, Father, are in me, and I am in you. May they also be one in us, so the world may believe you sent me. Jesus wants unity among his believers so that the world will know who Jesus is, so that the world will know that he came from the Father. He goes on to pray more about that unity, but I want us to focus on the last two verses of John chapter 17, the last two verses of this prayer. Verse 25, Righteous Father, the world has not known you. However, I have known you. And these have known that you sent me. I made your name known to them and will make it known. So the love you have loved me with may be in them and I may be in them. Jesus prays for us that the world will know him because of us. And in this last, uh, the last two verses here, he speaks of the love. He says, I've made you known. So the love you have loved me with may be in them and I may be in them. And I think it's important for us to remember and, and Jesus acknowledges it, that even in the coming turmoil, uh, that the uh, disciples were about to face. The, the confusion about his arrest and his death, uh, and then the, the joy they'll experience at his resurrection. The thing Jesus wanted them to not lose sight of is love. And people will know Christ through the way Christians love each other, even in times of um, confusion, times of desperation even for some people. Um, and uh, I, I just want us to think about that in, in this week and in the coming weeks. Yes, the world is different. Yes, um, there's uncertainty for sure. Uncertainty for sure. That's anyway. Um, there, there is uncertainty, and how we get through it will show either show people Christ or show people panic and despair and uh, people with with no direction. And so I want us to, to think about that in, in this week and the coming weeks and, and how, how can we in this different world that we're in today with this social distancing, um, with this inability to connect with people as we normally would, how can we show people love during this time? And how can we show them the love of Christ during this time? Um, and I encourage you to, to figure that out and, and to find ways that you uh, can do that.
whether it's through cards or, or phone calls, emails, um, offering assistance where you can, um, but just um, displaying a calm about us that knows this virus isn't bigger than Jesus. Um, and our faith in him uh, will allow us to get through this time of uncertainty. Um, and, and I just encourage us to, to do that. Uh, and as we are, are surrounded by uh, this week, um, where uh, his death and burial and resurrection is recognized by um, by a lot more people than uh, would just normally gather on, on a given Sunday to remember those things. Um, I think that provides us additional opportunities uh, to show Christ's love to people. So that's the thought I wanted to share with you today. Um, we'll have our communion service uh, at this time, and so I ask you to, to join me in that. Um, let's uh, bow in prayer. Father, we thank you for uh, the gift of your son, and we're thankful for this bread, which is a symbol of his body. And uh, Father, as we uh, looked at moments from his uh, last week on earth this morning, um, we are, are just reminded uh, of all he accomplished uh, in that body. Uh, what he uh, did as he spent time on this earth, the uh, the example he gave us, uh, the things he taught, uh, and uh, we just thank you for the gift uh, of your son in the flesh uh, to come to this earth and be the sacrifice for us uh, that we could never provide on our own. We thank you for the spread and we pray that you will bless it and bless us as we partake of it now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's pray again. Father, we thank you for this cup, uh, which reminds us of the blood that was shed for us. And again, we thank you for that gift. Uh, we thank you for the forgiveness of sins that come comes through and only through uh, the blood of your son. Um, we are um, thankful that you were willing to provide that sacrifice knowing that we couldn't possibly provide it on our own. Uh, we're thankful for the hope that comes uh, through uh, knowing Jesus and being washed in his blood. We pray that you'll bless this cup and bless those that partake of it now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, I want to thank those that have joined us on the public page. I invite you to join us anytime you can, and uh, we're thankful that you can join us through uh, this avenue. Uh, but we uh, also encourage you when when this uh, ends, when social distancing ends, and we can gather together as a body, we'd certainly love to have you join us uh, here at church uh, at uh, uh, at our gatherings. Um, we'll go ahead and end our, our public page uh, feed, but we'll continue 